here we go. This is Splash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 6th of April, 2019. And hey, Grimner, how you doing today? Hanging out in your reallibertymedia.com chat with your bots and bodies, I see. Grim's the guy that does all the technical stuff to make all this radio crap we do happen. Well, most of my crap. I don't know. Everybody else takes it really seriously. Especially Vinny. So, you can't listen to Vinny and giggle all the time. But you can do that with me. Anyway, hey, Barman Grimner. Oh, yeah, the bots and the bodies. That's what I'm talking about here. Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Asmo Chalcedony, Graham Z, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2. J. Dread, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Rain, Rums, Vanna White, Vinny Abel, <laughs> Anti as W4DKV, The Weather Dork, Beth Z, Beth Z, Phantom, and Well Then, Beetle Circle, Hey Honey, Colfax, 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, D, Dork Cake, Say Mental, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy 3, Gromit, J's, Nines, J's, Coz, U, Carl Marx, <laughs> Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Salamo. And that's a lineup of bots and bodies to be playful with today on this Saturday. I think we hit uh, spring now. Sun's out today. Don't need a coat in the daytime right now. That might change, but it was nice for a minute. And I think today, when I'm going to break all the dork rules and read a link. <laughs> this ought to be fun. I found, I don't know where I found this. Hold on. Let me open it up and see. It says here, oh, because it is about President Trump and Somebody named Gilfoyle, but I don't know who the hell Gilfoyle... Oh, this is, I guess, the writer of this, Gilfoyle. President Trump's commitment to Israel, a refreshing change from the Obama era. <laughs> it's so different. It was just, uh, the black guy didn't like talking to the Jew every day, but he had to. Now, this guy, this new Trump guy, ooh, he loves him some Jew. <laughs> Anyway, President Trump will join the Republican Jewish Coalition in Las Vegas this weekend, where he is expected to deliver a rousing speech on the importance of the U.S. Israel relationship. <sighs> but while President Trump's vocal support for the Jewish state has been unmatched by previous presidents, <laughs> We can't forget that his pro-Israel agenda has also been nothing short of impressive. <laughs> Suckers. America is once again defending Israel at the United Nations, confronting Iran head-on, and helping to promote Israel's sovereignty rights as an independent nation. The American people can rest assured... <laughs> And President Trump will continue to take every step necessary to further the U.S.-Israel friendship. Just stop sending them the money and see how long you're friends. But eh, you guys believe what you like. The United States and Israel have shared a special bond. <laughs> That's what they call that when you take it up the butt. They go, this is our special bond. Don't you tell anybody it's not special. <laughs> Since the Jewish state was born, President Truman took the historic move of breaking with his own State Department to cast a decisive vote in favor of Israel at the UN. The Israeli people have never forgotten this noble deed. And ever since, our two countries have grown continually closer <laughs> Not to mention that both of our great nations have a strong history of defending human rights and promoting liberal democracy. 
<laughs> wow, I don't know how you guys read these links without dying laughing. Okay. But even this unbreakable kinship has had its low points. Indeed, the U.S.-Israel relationship was tested during the Obama administration. President Obama broke protocol by refusing to visit Israel during his first trip to the Middle East. He's a fucking Muslim. I, why, why would you... Ex why did anybody think he'd go to... Anyway, he failed to move the embassy and declare Jerusalem Israel's capital, despite promising to do so. Wow. Before departing, though, Obama's team gave one final snub to the Jewish state at the UN by refusing to veto the vehemently anti-Israel resolution 2334. Don't even know what that is. All right. The, I'm sorry about all the laughing, guys, but th this is the best I can do for eating politics. Anyway, I'm going to try to get a drink of elixir here. Nah, it's still too hot. Oh, I'm getting old. Can't guzzle that boiling tea anymore. <laughs> anyway, worse, the Obama administration penned the disastrous Iranian nuclear deal, which sent over $100 billion back to the radical Islamist regime in Tehran, Israel's primary rival. Is wow! Well, this this is stare. I maybe it's just me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is so hard to read. <clears throat> Since the deal, Iran has been able to effectively to set up shop in Syria <laughs> and threaten Israel in its own backyard. Notably, Iran has poured funding into Hezbollah, a radical Islamist group that currently has over 150,000 rockets pointed directly at the Jewish state. <laughs> oh, wow. Thankfully, with President Trump in office, America has initiated a 180-degree course correction and put the U.S.-Israel alliance back on strong footing. <laughs> Appeasing Iran and letting Israel be bullied by its foes at the UN has come to a swift end. <laughs> the results this president has been able to deliver in such a short period of are beyond impressive. <laughs> to start, oh God, President Trump boldly declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel and moved the U.S. Embassy to the holy city holy city well, <laughs> sorry guys wait a minute while previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise they failed to deliver today i'm delivering noted the president during his announcement wow every sovereign nation God, they don't there is no such thing in this life as a sovereign fucking nation you morons Every sovereign nation has a right to declare and recognize their own capital. But since its founding, Israel has been denied that right, despite thousands of years of Jewish religious and historical significance to Jerusalem. No, that's all made up crap by a bunch of crazy people. And it's working, so it's funny as hell. <clears throat> In a powerful declaration that many other countries have since followed, President Trump cemented that right on the world stage. Speaking of declarations, President Trump recently made formal what many in Washington, D.C. have known for decades. The Golan Heights belong to Israel. Israel lost countless lives in the Six-Day War to secure the Golan Heights, and has since controlled it for more than 50 years. And with President Trump's statement that America would recognize the Golan as belonging to Israel, delivered another serious win for the Jewish state. Oh, boy. <clears throat> President Trump has also worked 
diligently to defend Israel at the United Nations. The Trump administration withdrew America from the UN Human Rights Council in June 2018 due to an anti-Israel bias. Better yet, he pulled back American funding from UNRWA, a so-called relief agency that has been exposed promoting anti-Semitic propaganda. <laughs> yeah, when you can't insult the other guy, think about it, people. That's where you're at. It's bad. <laughs> the radical Islamists, but you can slap those poor bastards around all you like. They'll just put one in the White House again. <laughs> The radical Islamists in Tehran have also been put in check. President Trump nixed the disastrous Iranian nuclear deal and slapped biting sanctions back on the regime. Yeah, make the fucking population suffer because the government didn't do what you told them. <laughs> what a game. Feeling confident with having a strong friend in the White House, Israel has taken the gloves off against Iran. As a result, Israel ordered hundreds of airstrikes against Iran's Syria-based military fortifications and terrorist proxies like Hezbollah. President Trump has continually delivered for the Jewish state by advancing both American and Israeli interests. Trust me, this is just the start. <laughs> While Donald Trump is in the White House, you can expect the U.S.-Israel <laughs> friendship to grow to even greater heights. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed the hell out of reading that. But it, it made me laugh a lot. I couldn't control my childish side through that wondrous story of the U.S. and Israeli, you know, rubbing stuff together to squeeze people out so the rich could get richer I suppose I don't know what you guys are looking at mm. but I will say it strikes me as a rerun of the old shit I've seen before wonder why let's see <laughs> Grimner says it is a left riot for sure I would Thanks, Grandma. At least, because it was hard to read that without just going insane with my own personal. What are you fucking people, nuts? The last thing you want is a strong U.S.-Israeli relationship because the whole point of that crap is to keep the Middle East in a fucking war with each other instead of with the Jews. <laughs> but it's coming, I think. And that crap about rockets aimed at um, Jew land. Whatever. Uh, my wife is chitter-chattering with me. Yes, you sent me an article. I might read another article. I was just getting uh, warmed up here. I've only been on the... Uh, how long have I been on? I come on at six. I've only been on a few minutes. Anyway, my wife sent me something. Let me open it up over here on wired.com and see what's going on in her little mind. Because she comes up with some better ideas. I couldn't help it. I, I'm so boring. I had to read Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. Israel, Israel, Israel. I mean, you guys working hard to support this crap, whether you realize it or not. So, that's why my hat's off to the fucker that'll tell him to go blow a horn. You know, leave me alone. I don't want no part of your crap. Now... I'm not insane. I understand that doesn't mean in the reality that you don't have their crap. But what it does mean is that you know better. And knowing better, well, that's that's at least something. Being able to do anything with the, all, all this wonderful knowledge we have in this shared electronic, you know, collective of outcasts and uh, anarchist scum people that don't like the popo and the state and all that kind of crap. Mm. But we'll always have a spot in that white carpet. You know what I mean? Because the voters will come out. Oh, he says to talk loud. He's heading outside, Mr. Vinny. Oh. Well, I was only kidding. I was just not going to uh, let what's-his-name run my show. I'll have my show with 
or without anybody else at my own personal whim by God and country. And if anyone wanted to come on, he would have, I opened up wire, he would have said something. <laughs> but I'm so sensitive today. Why are we sensitive? Let's see. Let me, because the other night I was doing, um, on 20% off, I was doing the control games. So we needed a little comic um, relief on Saturday from the dark table. So I read this funny shit about politics. Because if you know the truth about Israel, and you know the truth about the United States, and you know the truth about the United Nations, then you got to really understand that this whole performance is just that. It's all a bunch of shit. All of it. And if the, anybody in any kind of seat of control or power or decision were to make an honest evaluation of anything, their peers would not allow them to do it because it would help us, the people. And that's the last thing that this system wants is a, a healthy population of people that can think for their fucking self. Why would I say a crazy thing like that on the dork table? Well, that's probably because that's how I interpret what I see. I don't see the overwhelming majority of the populations anywhere being particularly aware of what's really going on in life. They don't have time. They got other things that take up their, uh, you know, their thinking and their physical and whatnot. They've got other priorities that are way more important at the moment than learning about this disastrous shit we live in <laughs> and as opposed to what they tell us it is oh this is the best of the best of the best and then you read about Levi Strauss is going to start using hemp to make pants again but they leave out the again part because they they want people to forget it was illegal <laughs> or that it is or wherever it's still going to be illegal places no you, once you start something like that i think it's got to be milked for every possible dollar it's worth before they'll erase that and go on to the next crap i wonder what the next crap's going to be how are we going to be controlled as people in the future because they had a nice run with the weed. Now, what are they going to do? Use the uh, the internet, maybe. Uh, but I don't know how. Because there's so many sneaky things you can do. You can hide behind a VPN. I can do that. I can come on here and my VPN will be in Israel. <laughs> or, or Venezuela. Or someplace I'm not. America. I can be in L.A. too. But... Uh, I don't do that very often, but I, I have just to see if anybody was paying attention. How come you're translating your shit from Venezuela? Wet back. <laughs> Learn how to speak fucking English, you. Anyway, and then when you, you know, when you don't do learn how to speak English, there's a lot more people that speak Spanish on Earth than there are that speak English. But hey, take your pick. Your audience. 90% of them don't care, and the 10% that do are helpless, because there's 90% that don't give a shit. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I think maybe it might be more than 90%, but probably like 95. I would say 97, just to be a real hard ass about it, <clears throat> because even as real liberty media based as real liberty media is we still have hands daily pumping us full of you know that good trump juice and status stuff so that we'll support the constitutional republic that america has become <laughs> i'm confused help me help me help me uh, I don't know what, what the point of all that jibber-jabber really is, but what America is or isn't, I don't give a flying fuck what it is or isn't. Because when you come right down to the nuts of everything, without physical enforcement, 
bullets and guns and you know crazy people to do your bidding whatever your idea is is worthless just another idea people are talking and talking is cheap we all do it <clears throat> i do it right here in crazy old voices at the dork table podcast on reallibertymedia.com and other places because Grimner puts us out there. I forget to mention all this stuff. I just do the radio because I was trying to have a giggle. And this works. And I got over my jitters of doing it, you know, solo. To the point of, I was hoping it would kind of chase somebody away. And then Vinny would come on. But, eh. You know, it's like, uh, funny how people can put out a joke. But sometimes they're not too quick to take one. They want to always be the joker, but never the jokey. wonder what that's about. Hmm. Well, I'm going to read what my wife sent me to read, like I should, so that she'll be a happy little camper. And let me open it up. And what's this about? It's called The Power of the State versus The Power of Love. Well, that sounds like my little wife, and this comes from Robert Higgs, ten, uh, the tenth of November, uh, the thirtieth of November, two uh, zero one three, and it goes as follows: For thousands of years, philosophers have argued that society must invest great power in the rulers because only great power can hold back the forces of evil, violence, plunder, and disorder. They have often concealed, however, that this solution has a downside. Powerful rulers may themselves resort to violence and plunder. In any event, society's positive productive forces always reside within the people themselves. All the genuine peace, cooperation, production, and other, oh no, and other, and order the society enjoyed sprang from them. So the state was never a solution to a problem the people could not solve for themselves, but itself a problem masquerading as the only solution to problems whose real solutions already lay close at hand, if they existed at all. Whoa. Given that wealth destruction undermines social well-being, how did it come to pass that the state, an institution based on violence and plunder, has overridden peaceful cooperation as the dominant factor in social life virtually everywhere on Earth? Although this simple question requires a complex answer, we know that the rulers have used fear of themselves and of other dangers known and unknown, thank you, Rummy, <laughs> to terrorize the people and convince them they are incapable of providing security, that only the state can provide it, first through fear alone, then through complementary religion, and ultimately through complementary ideal ideology. The people's convictions were twisted into forms of compatible with the rulers. The priest, ideologists, and the military's elite living at the expense of the plundered masses who were kept in line more by false beliefs than by raw force. <laughs> well, Grimner, this is a right up in your street, I would say. Written a little more uh, female, more like Cirque, Cirque style, but the, the behind it all. Whoa. And it's 424, so I'm going to do a Vinny real quick here. Give me a second, I'll get back to this link. But in the meantime, we're talking about the forces of life, the universe, and almost everything. Toki Toki. So it remains today... Is any feasible, feasible, is any feasible alternative conceivable? That was a hard line to read, people, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it was a tough one. Uh, Hard-headed people mock the idea that love is 
the answer to the people's dire situation. They insist that evil forces and evil men are afoot in the world, men who care nothing for love and seek only vile ends, and that such malevolence can be offend, can be fended off effectively only by meeting it with adequate force and violence. The, <laughs> so I, this is what I say every freaking radio show. Thus does the perceived security gap fuel a race to the bottom in which the ostensible protectors become more and more indistinguishable from the evil men who allegedly seek to hurt us? by meeting evil only with the ruler's upward ratcheting force and violence and their upward ratcheting suppression of our liberties and our means of self-protection. The ultimate goal, a social environment of real security and peaceful cooperation, recedes ever further from realization. Wow. Okay, moving the paragraph here. Hold on, guys. <laughs> Toke, toke, toke. Hold on. Jesus declared, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, that sounds like the worst advice I'd ever been given, but okay, if that's what Jesus said, no wonder they hung him on a cross. Of course, people, even most Christians, no doubt will say that this admonition, however lovely it might sound in a sermon, is utterly impractical. See? That behaving in accordance with it would leave us entirely at the mercy of those who seek to harm us. <laughs> Perhaps it would. Uh, that's how I live. I'm at the mercy of whoever seeks to harm me so far. Don't have no protection outside my two little fisty cuffs and my dog. <laughs> so far, so good. Nobody's come knocking. And I don't think anybody's ever going to come knocking. There's nothing... There's nothing uh, to draw that. <laughs> so, on my, you know, my end of this game. Anyway. So, back to the story. Yet, here we are, inhabiting a world divided in countless ways by mutual misunderstandings, hatreds, and yearnings for vengeance, because each society is subject to a state whose own interests are served by keeping this vicious pot boiling. We have no respect of ever breaking out of the endless cycle of evil, violence, and retribution. In the process, the whole world foregoes the immense blessings that would flow from mutual cooperation, peace, and tolerance. Well, they're pretty much telling you the truth, people. You're too crowded. You need to back off. Give people a little bit of spill, a little bit of room, a little space there. Anyway, individuals may rest their personal lives on love, and thereby find their, thereby find the peace that seemingly invades all philosophical and sociological understanding of social affairs. <laughs> well, bad word to affairs. No wonder it don't work. Social affairs piss off. Anyway, whatever wise men and women may know and practice in their own lives, however essentially Hobbesian analysis holds the great thinkers in its iron grip, and those who recommend love are dismissed as muddle-headed and simplistic. <laughs> That's pretty much what I've heard out of the naysayer. So... I'm right on target. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Let me get some of this delicious tea. Ah, Yet, to repeat, here we are inhabiting a world made no better by our hanging on the words of the greatest political philosophers, statesmen, and international relations experts. In their view, the state is given... And their analysis take for granted its nature and conduct. 
Perhaps this point of departure is the root error that they readily accept with most needs to be challenged. I have a copy. I didn't realize I didn't. Cirque sent that to me on uh, on the wire. I don't know why she didn't post it. But probably didn't expect anybody to be hanging around at the dork table in the chat room today. It's a real nice Saturday. So, you know, if you're home and you can't get out, this is, uh, I hope you're having fun with me here <laughs> reading this crazy stuff. Because that's what I'm doing on my Saturday evening. Doesn't buy, I don't know, Saturday, Monday, it's all the same to me. Anyway, back to this epic tale of, wow, opinion. <clears throat> okay. And here we go. So long as the state exists with its intrinsic violence, plunder, and insolence, and we seek solutions to our pressing social problems through it or in its dark shadow. We are doomed not to second best or third best solutions, but to make believe solutions that are at best momentary rest stops on the road to our worsening degradation and ultimate demise. Wow. Destruction is what states do or threaten to do. It is the nature of the beast as technological changes augment state powers. The culmination of this terrible sequence may be our absolute annihilation. Nah, nothing's going to absolutely annihilate everybody. There will be a mortality rate. We make rats and roaches look helpless. We're people. Don't you people forget that. Whatever we are, we're not rats and roaches. We're a little better off. Love turns us in the opposite direction. It seeks to build up whereas the state seeks to overawe and kill in the service of the self-interested elites who control it at the expense of the people at large. <laughs> Love has no need to flex muscle or seek vengeance time and again. Love intends the good of the other for its own sake, not as a means toward the end of one's own aggrandizement love is patient and long-suffering eh. power is impatient and easily provoked eh. okay love does not keep score international rivals do so in numerous dimensions love leads to inner peace and cordial relations with others whereas the state remains always at war if not against other states and certainly against its own subjects, on whom it preys ceaselessly in order to sustain itself and to gratify the ruler's insatiable ambitions for personal acclaim and unchecked power. Hard-headed people will say, of course, that in socio-political life, love just doesn't work. In sharp contrast, the insist power in the hands of the rulers does not work. And indeed, it does. That's the trouble. It works like shit. That's what how it works. But it works. It's not like it don't work. Can't say that. We're not insane. Political philosophers. Sounds made up. I don't know. It sounded good to me because a lot of that is pretty much how I how I see you know what I'm told. Like the Jew and Israel thing. That that mess. This fucking Trump, and that pussy Obama, it, all this performance so that we'll accept this crap. I don't think the truth would get them anywhere, so they got to have a fight. They got to have a power struggle, something you're familiar with. Because you know? for grown-ups to sit down and tell the truth to each other and make a decision based on that, who the fuck ever does that? Crying out loud, what... What la-la land would we be accused of living in if we told people, hey, you know how I deal with my life? I sit down with my partner and I tell her the truth. And they go, no, you don't. How could you? Well, I think that it's, you know, maybe the truth isn't always the prettiest thing in the world to dazzle somebody with or show them how cool you are. That won't. You'll never get that result, but the truth will get you places in life 
in a more comfortable position. I don't know. I I think it's a mental state, you know, for a uh, to be dishonest with people and not tell them the truth about shit. How can that advance you anywhere? Now, but if you if you watch the uh, the news, the internet, the the life around you, you know, the powers that be, the church, the educated, all these groups of con men and hustlers, the the lawyers, the doctors, whatever group there is, they're all frauds. Everything that they do collectively is pitted against us as participants. We're the ones that are going to suffer for what they're doing. And now they got this new crop. They're, uh, they're going to mandate shit. Now, <laughs> didn't pot teach anybody anything? You know, if they're going to... They're going to do this. They did it with alcohol. Then they did it with weed. Now they're going to do it with vaccines. Now, I see a link and I see a, a pattern emerging here, people. I'm I'm not sure if I'm looking at this all by myself. Oh, <laughs> I got a truth out of uh, Grimner. I like that link Cirque sent me. And if you don't like it, well, then you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can like it it's the truth it's not the truth we all know what the truth is. that's the saddest part about it the truth is whatever you believe doesn't matter what you believe because uh, that's how the truth works I think I think people also like to feel a part of a bigger group they don't want to be isolated and stand alone with their crazy idea that the world may not be round after all. Perhaps we are being lied to about it. And then they would say, well, what would the point of that be? To put you in a group so that you're on one side of the group or the other side of the group. You can't stand neutral in this idea. The Your fellows will not accept it. The, you'll be the, you'll be ridiculed or, uh, Maybe after a while, like Mary. Mary doesn't know either. She she admits that. And I did a lot of dork tables with her, so I know Mary. You know, a little bit better than most most of the personalities on the well, most of the personalities I do radio with. I know them pretty good, or I know enough about them to recommend their input to other people, like. Rob Works and Larry Woods and Vinny and Mary and Grimm and Moose. Solvener, when Solvener was online, because I really enjoyed the shit out of talking to him. Walter was a very interesting character from the land where he is from. And he had some singular opinions about folk. He wasn't real kind. <clears throat> he made a point of telling people that he, in his opinion, he thought we were a bunch of idiots. And I'm trying to find a, you know, a softer road than, hey, you're stupid, because that, when people call me stupid about my version of this world, uh, calling me stupid doesn't entice me to listen to them tell me what shit is. <laughs> it's more like, wait a minute, hmm. we seem to be on opposite sides of the equation, <clears throat> but when the action is better than the explanation, <laughs> what do you do then? And how how does would that translate? Uh, you know, when you see something like the Kennedy thing and you saw it, but the explanation of what you saw, that was ten times more interesting than what you saw. <laughs> Their story had all kinds of crazy ideas added to it that your brain would have never thought of all by itself. That's what... Eh, Donna just showed up. Hey, Donna. I don't know if she's a listen, and I say hey to her or not. On the RLM chat, I will type a hey D in there, because I think she showed up late. I would have noticed her name at the end, because I read it, and Salamo was last name of Red. Ha 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 ha. I don't know, Vinny, uh, Vinny. 
I don't know if Rob Works is around. I haven't been reading the chat because I was reading links today. Going off the normal, you know, because I can. I can do whatever I want on the Dark Table podcast. And nobody can bully me around. And I'll just get me a big old can of, uh, oh, what's that stuff called? Weed. I mean, uh, 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 <laughs> spinach. Uh, get me some spinach and I'll kick some ass all over the dork table. Yeah, maybe I could get somebody on here and we can argue about reality. Oh, man. How could anybody else not really get a grip on that your reality and my reality are just, they're visiting, you know, they're passing ways. There's no physical to it. It's how you see, how you interpret, and how, you know how you feel the outside is. But what physical action is there in interacting in the world, really, when you think about it? Unless you don't have a willing partner, <laughs> you might be doing it alone. Ah, get, oh, she's listening on the RLM radio chat. She's got the Dork Table podcast blasting in her ear. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, well, see, uh, I have trouble reading the chat and bullshitting it at the same time, so I miss a lot of stuff. I'm slow here. I'm the slowest radio personality on the reallibertymedia.com, let me tell you. But I challenge others, come on, try this radio stuff. Because you never know, you might have a gift for reading the uh, Trump, Trump Israel things without laughing and making them sound even more ridiculous than they already are. And, you know, because there's real people out there that vote and work and live and they do all these crazy things. But you know what they don't do? <clears throat> they don't doubt the system that uh, surrounds them. They just go along with shit and go, I don't know. That don't, they're doing it. Mm. So somewhere in the education system, I have a feeling people were herded in another direction besides being free. Now, being free is the last... Oh, man. Why would you want to be free in this life at this point in history? You can't do anything alone anymore. Well, Grimner's trying to prove he can, but uh, hmm. maybe maybe that's uh, that... I've never been one to be all by myself to that level of living. You know, the independence of the of the rest of the herd. I'm a herd. I guess I'm a sheep in the herd. I'm just a, a black one that doesn't buy, buy. You know, I'll never buy to fucking Trump. No way, no how, no can do. Or any motherfucker they put in that, that joke of a position they call POTUS. Please. That poor bastard in that seat is just as helpless as I am. In the long run, because if you cross the lines in government as a POTUS and you go too far and do things that you want to do, the CIA will take you out for doing it. And that has been proven over the last few years to the public if they want to look at it. And then again, you, uh, my, it's like my aunt would uh, protect Hillary Clinton. Oh, no, no, those are just terrible stories the Republicans write about Hillary to make her look bad. No, not quite. But when uh, when you support somebody blindly like that, well, maybe not blindly, but yeah, to me, that's as blind. She doesn't know Hillary any better than I do. I never met Hillary. I've only had the luxury of reading about what Hillary's done over the years. And from what I've read, I'm glad I have never met Hillary. Hillary is a bad lady. That woman, boy, I'm boy, pissing her off would leave a bruise. You might not recover from pissing that woman off. I don't know. That would be the assumption, because she's been around since the Nixon days. And when she was practicing law in the Nixon days, I think she was actually working for Nixon. And if I'm Wrong, some nerd on the RLM can correct this bit of trivia. But what ended up happening is she got written up. I don't think anything really came of it. But she got some kind of reprimand for being a you know snaky lawyer. 
Like, you know, all lawyers are sneaky and cheesy and greasy and, you know, they, they're they like, they, they're uh, bottom dwellers. You know? They live off the rest of everybody else's work. And, and they succeed the best off whoever suffered the most misery and got the biggest check. And the lawyer's right there to collect a portion of it because, you know, they helped them get the money. <laughs> See, and that's why I just say bring back dueling, and the first thing that we wouldn't need would be lawyers. After that would follow probably politicians. Right after that would be clergy. Then the next thing to go would be these fucking lying doctors. And you get rid of those four problems from your life, and things start to show a little improvement. So I'll settle for not speaking the language as a way to um, dodge the, the Fed the government, the powers that be, whatever this crap is here. Because Cirque recognizes it. And, you know, this is her home. So I'm a guest, blah, 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 like I always say. And when you're a guest in somebody's home, sometimes you don't have to um, per so much lie, but it's just behave yourself in a fashion that isn't insulting to the, to the host. So... Because I'm pretty loose about my opinion about the state and the federal and the this and the that and the queens and the kings. And that's my personal opinion. I'm entitled to that at some level of just being alive. But some people think that it depends on what bit of dirt you're sitting on at the time and who owns your paperwork, what you have the freedom to say. And I don't. I think anybody has the freedom to say any stupid thing they fucking please to say if they want to. It's just that should they say something that one finds insulting and ignorant, the one that finds it insulting and ignorant has every right to tell them, I find that insulting and ignorant. So there you go. And then who's right and wrong? Nobody. It's just the way one person sees this and one person sees that. And then from that, we'll make our little groups and then we'll fight amongst ourselves and win and lose and plunder. And personally, I'm a little bit, I think I'm plundered and looted and wore just out and wanted uh, the opposite of that, whatever the opposite was. Yeah, loose loo, but don't try to bend me over the table, my friend. I will not go easily. <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, that just made me think of some greasy doctor. Ooh, doctors. Okay, so maybe I will try to find something else to read. I'm getting a giggle out of reading today. On the dark table of all places where I swore I would never resort to reading any of this here crazy crap on the, um, uh, uh oh, if I keep ad blocker on, will it still give me the link? Oh, yeah, gave me the link anyway. Hmm, I wouldn't turn off my ad blocker. I thought it would strip me of my right to read this here crap. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the dark table where we're going to read about President Donald Trump and his agents of disaster now i remember this herman cain guy he was uh i was in america at the time he was supposed to be running for the white house and he was some big ceo of a pizza place godfather's pizza so i'm reading it right here okay and the and his thing was it was brilliant the tax reform he come up with this new tax plan not not expose the IRS and tell people the truth, but no, just yet another bogus story to justify them getting a percentage of our wages and earnings and our fucking money. <laughs> and now, here we are all these years later. It's been a while. It's probably 10 years. They disgraced him with bringing up some you know, woman he was probably not doing anything with, but... The accusation made him look bad, and he backed off and decided, I'm not running anymore, and I'll take my my tax improvement, and I'll just go away Oh, And here we are 10 years later or so, right? So they're going to bring it back up, except for his attempt to 
instill this new tax law, you know, this new way of taking your money from you. So, I'm going to read to you folks. I just had to throw that in because I got a memory for a few little damn things. Anyway, Trump to name Herman Cain to the Fed. Oh, reports Axios. Oh, boy. It's, yeah, he's going to be on the Federal Reserve Bank. Fucking hustlers. Anyway, President Donald Trump on Thursday said he has recommended Herman Cain for a Federal Reserve Board seat. Wow, that that's just wrong on so many levels. The former Republican presidential candidate and Godfather's Pizza CEO was rumored to be under consideration for a central bank appointment in January. Yeah, I hope they put the appointment up his appointment hole. Trump said Kane is currently going through background checks, but imagines he will be in good shape. He's a highly respected man. He's a friend of mine. He's somebody that gets it. And I hope everything goes well. Trump told reporters in the Oval Office. Herman Cain is a very good guy. <laughs> this is the POTUS talking, a very good guy. Wow, I'm so impressed with Trump. I, you have no idea. The president has been open in his disdain for the Fed, saying a succession of rate hikes has limited economic growth. <laughs> According to a recent Wall Street Journal report, Trump told Fed Chairman Jerome Powell that he felt like he was stuck with him. Well, what a you know what a con job this is. Twenty one trillion in debt doesn't really click with the modern day mind. I don't think they understand that we don't know who who do we owe the fucking money to, the Federal Reserve. Bank? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, try to get people to go along with that, knowing what they're doing, and see how long that lasts. Anyway, with Kane, says 73, I don't know. The Fed would get someone who had, oh, he must be 73 years old now, who has experience in central banking. He served in multiple positions from 1989 to 1996 at the Kansas City Fed, including as chairman, before pursuing political activities. Well, isn't that a nice little thing to tell people after the fact? I didn't know he was... I didn't have any idea when I was listening to all that stuff back when he was telling it. Anyway, however, he may not be quite in line with Trump's preference for low rates. In 2014, he warned that the Fed couldn't keep holding its benchmark interest rate near zero. Uh, Trump also has said that he intends to nominate economic commentator Stephen Moore to the Fed board. That move has been caught in controversy over recent revelations about Moore regarding a delinquent tax bill and a child support payment dispute with his ex-wife. Bad guy, he's fighting with his ex-wife. Oh, what a surprise. What? Wow. That's it, huh? This is what we have. Hey, Rob works. Uh, we're, uh, I guess, stick a fork in us. We ought to be done by now. I think people would just like, nah, I ain't going to do that. But I don't ever hear that. Even here, crying out loud here, this is like uh, the most compliant place I've ever lived in a long way. But the lack of police around gives me different ideas. You know, I mean, it just shows to, it shows me that it can be done without the threat of violence. This the whole game is some people. Uh, I guess when the groups get too big, because all this gun law shit ain't ever gonna go anywhere. You're never well. They're gonna breed it out of people at, through the school system. They're gonna raise these wacky boneheads that uh, are af against the weapon. Uh, I'm. I'm just like, you know, either arm everybody or just fuck them off. You know, they're not really, they don't interest me as an individual. 
but they seem to interest everybody else and for different reasons. So I like to shoot at targets. Okay, well, I got an internet for that. I don't have to go anywhere and it, all that hoopla to do something. I, I don't miss all that because I'm getting older, not younger over here on the dork table, people. Yeah, when I started this whole excursion here, I was I just turned, what, 54. So the last five years have been kind of hectic compared to other times. I, well, maybe not hectic, but uh, the change from English to Danish was kind of unusual. Well, Mental, Mental knows about the Danish. He's been here. And when he was here, the um, the dollar was, whew, boy, I'm sure glad I don't rely on dollars. If I had to rely on dollars, I would be in very big trouble in Denmark at this point in history. So do a little better with the English pound in case you're uh, curious, find ways to, to deal with an exchange. <laughs> That's too funny because it's all fiat fucking currency anyway. But holding that knowledge, what good, eh, what good does it do me? But I get to talk about it and tell you, hey, guess what? And then you go to the bank and you see him, you see the bank do these things, whatever they're doing. What you don't see is you don't see the bank refusing currency as a way to pay your mortgage, unless you try it. But who's going to do that? Who's going to go into the bank with a stack full of $100 bills and say, hey, I'm here to pay my mortgage. And they look at you and they go, uh, let me get my manager. And then they get the manager and they tell you, no, we, we can't accept that to pay your mortgage. What they don't do on film, I've seen the film where they refuse, but they didn't tell you why. And the reason why is so different than what you, I expected it to be. It was simply this. The accounting done for the mortgage for your property is not done in currency it's done in what they call credits <laughs> they they've really they've done so much to this federal reserve banking fractional reserve practice thing since they started it i don't think the people involved know what's real and what ain't anymore i don't i don't think anybody knows what's real and what ain't the one thing we all agree on is there's this looming over the shoulder thing looking at you called national debt oh, the danish kind with the cheese in the middle ha 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 yeah they because they got bakeries and boy they bake like whew, they like their food here huh cakes anyway <clears throat> uh, i don't let me get back and see if i can find something else to read on this here particular dork table podcast i was kind of enjoying reading links for a change usually just ramble about what i think but thought i'd give people a break and i'll let you know what other people think <laughs> because to me it is like a never-ending source of amusement and well, i guess that sounds pretty big of me <laughs> natural wait a minute it's a natural frequency of human heart. Natural frequencies of human hearts. The practical way to true love and other places. By, who wrote this thing? Uh, I'm going to read the first paragraph. And if it gets to, no, I'm not reading that. That's, an, that's too much weirdo stuff. But, stuff, 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 stuff. Well, I'll, maybe I'll just go back to yakking about how I feel about Donald Trump. I think that uh <laughs> I'd still I'd like to see Donald Trump duke it out with Nancy Pelosi. I wonder how they do it. Hey, maybe they could fight in jello, you know, like a couple of old strippers. <clears throat> Donald Trump versus Nancy Pelosi in a no holds bar fight. Not to the death, but something in Jello. <laughs> I bet that'd go over great on pay per view. The followers would love it. I, I'm wondering what Hansel. Maybe I use Hansel as a as a, a a gauge to see what that could be worth before I submit my idea to Washington. Because these people will do shit to get more money out of us. Don't know why. It, it, 
it seems so pointless, all the physical activity to recover fake money. So, hmm, maybe I'm on the wrong track and it has nothing to do with money at all. Money is just the illusion that you're supposed to pay attention to. Well, they take other shit from you that is way more valuable than money. Hmm. What would those things be? What could they be? Maybe uh, your own personal ability to deny your consent. Whoa. Because if you don't give them your consent, your consent then they'll deny you the paperwork, whatever the hell you're you know, chasing after, that you've got to beg the freaking government to do it for you in the first place. Why? Well, the why is really shitty. It's because they don't trust us. If they trusted us, what would the need for all this categorizing and control and counting and bean counting and accounting, what would it all be for? Who benefits from the way things are? And we've proven time after time on all the radio podcasts we do collectively during the week from Hal Anthony on Sunday to me on the dark table on Saturday and everything in the center. All points you to if you trust the Fed, if you vote, if you do these things, chances are you have no idea what you're doing. You're believing a story that is not true and and then it proves itself you get somebody come on the real liberty media.com chat and i'm about ready to do radio and writes things about this is a, a a constitutional republic you know no there's never been a constitutional republic it's always been a, a meat grinder that acquires whatever is in its path. It takes everything it sees. And then, after it takes it, then it divvies it out to its rich friends to rent out or use to work the poor people. <laughs> and as a collective, this is the best we can do. Because... I guess because we're all a brain, bunch of brain-dead morons in the long run. If you thought it through, why would you, why would you want to do any of this stuff? Look at the crap. The, look at the results of it all. Poison in the freaking water. How many times have I sniveled about fluoridated water? I mean, come on. But it's a foundation, and it's still continuing to go on, even though the information's all. Hey, guess what happens when you drink fluoride in your water? Well, you lose conscious contact with your third eye. You'll never even know you have one if you drink enough of this. And the results prove that that theory in the third eye department is correct. We have proof. <laughs> There's, I mean, hell, I don't know what the attraction to the political arena is. When, Whenever you open up links about these people they're always bad they're always negative they're always in trouble they're it's never about any wonderful mess, great happy shit they did you know when did you ever read about eh, mrs pelosi fed the homeless and she was you know wearing a, a peasant dress and sandals and she was like everybody else why who gives a fuck about stuff like that they created that shit to keep us in fear so that we'll do what we're doing. Because nobody wants to live under a bridge, my friend. Uh, well, <clears throat> of course there's people that enjoy that. So, hmm. they're an audience, I suppose. There's a, a marketable, profitable way to enjoy the homeless and the drug-addicted population of our respective countries. Now, when Portugal went, hey, you know what? We're not going to prosecute this crap anymore. We're just going to make all the drugs are all legal. Okay, using them is legal. Now, maybe getting them. I didn't think about all that because laws are, you know, whenever you got law. Now, if they just cut the prohibition and tr truly live up to what I read that, they put their attention on curing 
the poor sick fuck that's doomed to a life of drug addiction. And that's not a lot of people in the first place. I, it would be probably 10% or less of a population that would even attempt something like that. And then what? Maybe 1 out of 10 people that would try it would continue to use it to the point of an addiction. So, hmm. I'm going to do a little checking on this on my uh, my uh, time off the radio. I'm just doing a little brain salad surgery here on the idea. Because uh, I'm all about the uh, stopping the prohibition. That would cure everything. But hmm, it would take a certain amount of honesty for a government to come to terms with a situation of that nature and not make it more of a problem than it already is. <laughs> and if indeed this is what they're doing, then there should be records. They did the law thing a while ago. So there should be some kind of physical proof that their experiment worked or did not work. And it'll come out in numbers on the interwebs. And there will be equal amounts of truth and bullshit. So... My job, I'll put it, I'll be like Vinny, and I look for the truth with my rose-colored glasses on. Uh, Grimner posted something. I'm going to see if I can't read it. Oh, good Lord, it looks pretty bad, but I'll do this one on Grimner. This is, what a shitty story. <laughs> it's okay. I feel like reading something disgusting anyway. Medieval disease. Medieval. Medieval diseases making a comeback due to feces on streets. <laughs> Experts warn of public health crises by Paul. My, yeah, by Paul Joseph Watson. Two hours ago, on sixth of April, two zero one nine. Here we go. I already read the. The title of this, and we we'll get right to the story here, Grimner. According to a report by Kaiser Health News, infectious diseases, some that ravaged populations in the Middle Ages, are resurging in California and around the country and are hitting homeless populations especially hard. Outbreaks of Shigia. Bacteria and hepatitis A. I don't know the first one how to even pronounce that. I'm not a medical student. <coughs> Both are which are caused by exposure to feces. Ooh. Are on the increase in Southern California, New Mexico, Ohio, and Kentucky. Primarily among people who are homeless or use drugs. Experts are now warning. <laughs> of a public health crisis that could see the diseases spread to the general population. Uh, yeah. Many would assert that the homeless problem and by extinction the feces problem in cities like San Francisco is being exacerbated by the government handling, handing out free needles to drug addicts. Right. That's the problem. San Francisco's junkie population, many of whom live on the streets and use sidewalks as outdoor toilets, <laughs> now stands at 24,500, an increase of 2,000 drug users since 2012, and 8,500 more people than the city's 16,000 high total uh, high school students. <laughs> oh, jeez. More addicts than students. Oy, that's funny as fuck. Despite the increase, the city handed out a record 5.8 million free syringes last year, about 500,000 more than in 2017. There were 9,659 calls complaining about needles littering the streets in 2018 an increase of a third on 2017 numbers. Instead of keeping people mired in an endless cycle of desperation and addiction, surely the money would be better spent on helping them go clean. Well, no. What are you, crazy? Do you, uh, of course they want. They want this exactly the way it is. 
if society wanted anything different, if you have any idea what a society truly is, well, the leaders of your society are creating exactly what the voter wants by the vote. That's how they do it. They go, hey, Israel, is it all right for us to do this? And Israel says, nope. And then you don't do it. So there you have it. So cleaning up San Francisco ain't going to happen because Jews don't want you to. And if the Jews did want you to, they'd be all over the fucking place going, blah, 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 because you cannot insult the Jews back. You just get called anti-Semite. So they'd go, wait a minute, shit on the streets of San Francisco? No, 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 we can't have that. My brother America, we will change that. But they must want it because it's there. <laughs> yeah, free needles makes you shit in the street. See what I mean? It... I don't know. I lost track of everybody in the States. I guess I could get back to them and find out, but I don't really give a shit anyway. I was just reading something for fun on the Dork Table podcast at the reallibertymedia.com on my Saturday Dork Table. Because out of a joke, I went solo today. I was just teasing hands because I don't care for hands being around anyway. So, oh, is Vinny going to do radio? No, Vinny ain't. Get out of here. <laughs> go, go to Starbucks. Go bother somebody. <laughs> make, make a video for a friend. My invisible friend. <laughs> hey, Java Doctor 2 just logged on. He must have forgot. Probably doesn't even know it's Saturday. He's all drugged up on his medication from his knee surgery. <laughs> slobbering around on those opioids, making crazy decisions about what he's not going to do in the future, like <laughs> therapy or certain people with therapy. Yeah, you, you can't go off somebody's face. No, no, no. Pretty, that doesn't always work. Sometimes even pretty people are vicious and they hurt you in physical ways that they find amusing. <laughs> At least that's what TV's taught me, you know. All the beautiful people in the world, they are violent psychopaths that want to hurt you, my friend. Eh, go to the border and see. <clears throat> go to the border. Well, I mean, hey, wow, how many more people are they going to squeeze into America? <laughs> Satyr dork. <laughs> I got a lick sore from the wife. Oh, I must be doing a better show than I thought. Satter Dork Day. <laughs> Grim's getting creative with his vowels. <laughs> I don't know. What do you call that? Is that a vowel? No, wait. Not vowels. His nouns. <laughs> vowels. <laughs> I don't do grammar worth the shit. I was a lousy grammar Nazi. But I had a, an incredible short-term memory as a kid. And I could remember anything for a week or two without well, I mean, total recall. Just spit it right back at him. Like I knew what I was saying. And over the years, I've probably smoked and drank that ability away. But, eh, it was fun when I had it. And now that I don't have it, I don't need it. I got everything I need in life to be comfortable. You know. Uh, of course, if I was a greedy slob, I could be, you know, want more of this and want more of that. But I don't. <laughs> I'm just a lazy clown in the world today. Making fun of the president and the queen of Denmark and the queen of England. You know, the queen of England isn't even English, for crying out loud. They did a little paperwork trail on her. Oh, oh man. And the crap the English were doing during World War II. Well, I'm glad my mom's not around to tolerate having to hear all the the truth about how the royal family truly is now <laughs> she didn't like hearing it so i wasn't allowed to really go too deep with it when i did mention it to her but <laughs> she was english i'm telling you and her indoctrination would just kick the shit out of my indoctrination any old day and yeah you'd find these poor people in a country like england and they have a loyalty, a loyalty blah, 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 to this fantasy world that they're looking at because it's so sparkly and wonderful and 
all the great things that these royal people tell you they do, and then 50 years rolls by, and you read the truth about what they were doing through that 50 years, and it makes you sick. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that uh, mom's not having to tolerate the reality of what became of all this crap. We were raised with one thing, and then it evolved into this shit. I don't, we live on, you know, I would say we, if, if the world is round, I would call it a shit ball. It stinks. It's got really grody parts to it that they're there on purpose. They're put there by people with intention. They just lie to you about what their intention is, or they wouldn't put nuclear sites on fault lines. <laughs> You know, or maybe they didn't. Maybe they were experimenting with their nuclear play toys and they created a fault line because they were experimenting with it. We're so small on Earth. How do you fucking know what these people do or don't do? I've read and read and read till my eyes are crossed and bleeding and tired and worn out. And to this day, I still can't find one explanation of any one thing that is actually satisfying. They all lead me to wonder about something else. You learn about one thing, and then the next thing you know is, hey, I wonder if that's true then. <laughs> so, the quest for truth, the truth movement, and all that crap, no, no, no. It's amusing, and it's fun to watch, and there's a lot of really important information to be had from it. But to believe that, as a group any group is going to ever take this void on head on one on one fight it and beat it and put it down no that's not possible and even if it did the news reports would tell you the fucking opposite okay and the news report reports to the people that don't have access to internet <laughs> they got tv they're still they're still behind that's where they are so while we have the internet to actually see what's going on around the world, I can video certain people and go, hey, is there something going on? And they could show me on a camera. Yep, this is happening. Here's the film. Look at it yourself. But what we got is millions and millions of people that believe the state. So if the state puts it on a bit of paper and sells it to them for a buck or two bucks or whatever the newspaper is now, and they sell the right advertising. You know, this company supports this newspaper, so you know that the information that you're getting in this information is true. You can count on it. Oh, no, it's not. I don't. And, and even if that particular whatever thing is were true, the foundation is so full of shit that it really doesn't matter what they tell you at at the point we're at now, $21 trillion in debt. And I said this on another show. I'm going to say it here at the dork table, too, because I really liked what I said about this. There are $20 trillion in debt. Now, if I was, say, in debt, I would want to make something happen besides a default. So I would probably want, hey, I'm already in debt for you to you for this. Let's double down and try to break even. Now, depending on the debt, the other party might be interested. Well, I'm just saying, we're $21 trillion in debt for fiat money that's not real for shit we never received as a collective. Double down and go, hey, let's retool this whole thing and run everything on hemp. <laughs> Get rid of all this freaking pesticide nonsense and poisons. Stop openly using poisons on the population, disguising them as things that are good for the population. It's insane. And it works because they tell us bullshit. And if they told the truth, like I've insisted on ever since I can remember, but I don't know. The truth is such hard work, guys. We don't, we don't, we don't want people to know that. Let's just, let's just continue the story, and it's a lot more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd want to believe that, you know, fluoride is really damaging to your third eye 
it has nothing to do with your fucking teeth. That's just the way they got away with putting it in the water. That was their excuse, you know, it was for your good. So here we go again. If they lied about that, what didn't they lie about? And if you if you can make a list of things they didn't lie about, and on the other side of the paper, write the things they did lie about, there's your problem. <laughs> If you run your marriage like a government, guess where your marriage is going to end up? It's going to end up in court. <laughs> You're going to end up fighting over who owns the silverware and shit like that. So, <clears throat> so sorry to make light of all this stuff, but come on, guys. It's, it's not that difficult to really stand back and take a serious look at it. If you still support what you see, I would say there's something wrong with the person looking on at that point. Uh, anyway, and then the reasons behind my decision, I spent the first hour reading about them live on the dork table, which, well, I've done the reading of links before, but I kind of, I don't know. Grim said, it fits right in with your homeless thing, Flash. <laughs> yeah, free needles make you shit in the street. And, wow, no, they don't. That's, nah, society accepting something allows you to do what you do. If, if the society you're in doesn't allow it, it doesn't happen. There you go. But where do you draw the lines with... Uh, Social decorum and enforcement. And what, what were these people not taught about living within the confines of a society that gave them the, I don't know, what would you call it? It's not nerve. They're expressing a right of some kind or another granted them by fucking government. So, wow. In one way, it looks like you, know, you give people the freedom to do something and look what they do with it. Well, yeah, but you're using a really shitty example by picking on the heroin addict in the first place. And then a place like San Francisco, it's so fucking overcrowded. If they got that many people there, I live there. It's it's surrounded by water on three sides. You can only put so many people comfortably on that little bit of dirt before you start exploding from the pressure of all the people. <clears throat> That's why God built Oakland, so that people would get out of the city and go live over on the other side of the bay. <laughs> and now look what they did. They overcrowded it. They overpopulated it. They put too many of the... Um, dumbasses that they choose for public office even live there well live there she has a home there and this this pompous bitch uses the air force as her own personal freaking uh, taxi service to travel around the united states and and they charge <laughs> the air force charges the government to do this and this female is worth like i don't God, $200 million. More money than the bitch could spend in 50 lifetimes. But yet, because of this entitlement that the superiors get once they get selected for their fucking office, then they do these selfish, ignorant, moronic things and make it a way of life. Oh, this is how you live when you're in power and when you occupy a seat of decision, you have things, blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. I would have more respect for a guy that rode a bicycle and wore Levi's and t-shirts than I do for any of these monkeys with their fucking $3,000 suits and their fancy shoes. That just tells me, right, from the minute I see him, avoid that prick at all. Cause that prick will fuck you in a heartbeat. Get out of his way. Ruthless. Ruthless. Danger, Will Robinson danger <laughs> but uh and i think the proof comes out in uh, reality where when you're in a public situation and people of wealth are invited to that situation but they don't do anything with their attire 
to impress everybody there so that everybody will know they're big shots. What these guys did, they laid low and wore comfortable clothes and, and stood off to the side and just chitter-chattered like they were old friends. So uh, I respect that kind of behavior out of somebody that's got a little bit of money. You know, it's not always, it's always a bad thing. I can't lie about that because wherever there's uh, an abundance of the, to the point of I've got so much, I got to hide what I have. Well, that, that tells me what one story, but it tells the guy chasing it, I need more. <laughs> As it once told me, whatever I had, oh, I needed to get more. More of this, better that. Da -da 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 -da. Now, Nah, I think I grew out. I, how do you call that? Grow out of it? Yeah, because I'm. You come down to the end of life. You don't have time to chase shit anymore. Chasing things is over. I'm surprised I was still doing it in my fifties. Maybe I didn't know I was fifty-four when I was fifty-four. Mm. There's a twenty percent chance. I don't know. I'm fifty-nine right now. <laughs> I'm sure I appear to be that age, or I might uh, strike somebody they physically saw. They go, oh, yeah, you're probably about, you're an old codger, all right. But maybe if you just heard the voice and you didn't see the person behind the voice, I wonder what the age guess would be. Hmm. Do I sound like a crotchety old man? <laughs> it cracks me up to think about these vain little things. But, you know. You do what you can live with in life. That's my moral philosophy towards all you people. I take every individual as they come. And with that individual, I do what I can live with according to their behavior. The nicer they are to me seems to make it hard for me to be mean to them. I mean, if they've never been mean to me, what's my grounds? What am I going to say? I'm defending myself. Oh, she looked at me funny, sir. Your mom was giving me a, the evil eye. I could tell. No, she was scratching her eye, stupid. <laughs> Something like that. Because in my glasses, I unless I'm in my far glasses, I can't see three feet. So, I think the point I'm trying to make about all that is... Oddly enough, in my physical reality, nobody has been outwardly cruel uh, in a way that, like they were back home. And people were just a lot angrier, a lot meaner in the public domain. You know, the public at large was not intimidating because they didn't scare me. But I was always on my guard. You know, there was always a reason to not get too comfortable because you could end up in trouble of some kind or another. And that's, you know, again, I lived with uh, uniformed people that did medical and they had connections with all the police. So through um, acquaintances, I knew all the people, all the right people in town to survive on uh, the better side of fortune, I would say. Because, well, uh, when the cops have been told by the paramedics, you know, keep an eye on so-and-so, make sure they get home okay, they do. <laughs> it is the, uh, and there was, when I was physically in Jacksonville the last year, there was regular violence. I told this story once or twice, but two Marines, one of them was a gang Marine. They got gang members in the Marines in Jacksonville, North Carolina in like 2010, something like that. 2010, might have been the last year I was there, 2011. Anyhow, one Marine owed the other Marine a bit of money. And it was a very minuscule, tiny little amount of money. But for whatever reason, it couldn't be collected. So the, the guy that was in debt got shot over it. And these are Marines shooting each other over debts. So that tells me, because I've been living amongst these people for so long, that one of those two wasn't a Marine. Which one could it have been? Because if they were to, you know, draw on each other, so to speak, 
I think that the real military would do its best to not let anybody know it happened. It wouldn't put it in the newspaper as a matter of public information and controversy. Hey, check this out. Now we got the kids shooting each other. Whoa. But part of this sick plan that we live in is kind of the reason I was laughing so hard about, you know, Trump's great work with Israel to stop the anti-Semites from hurting Israel because everything Israel does is so fucking wonderful. <laughs> Think about it. What if they do? They take land away from people claiming it was their land when it never was their land. It was always the land of the people that seemed to occupy that land. <laughs> It was all Arab land at one time, people, but no, it's a, this group of UN nutjobs got around and figured, hey, how can we stir things up in the Middle East for the next two, three hundred years? Well, let's put a Jewish country right in the fucking center of the whole thing on the water so we can protect it from invasion, because it'll be surrounded on all sides by, guess what, Arabs. Jews and Arabs can live hand in hand in the desert, you crazy people, don't you know? <sighs> now, I think what we don't know, because, well, for one, this is so many years down the road, is the, the reality of the tribes and the histories that went into all this occupation, right? And occupation in terms of we're all doing it. We all occupy dirt somewhere under some flag of a kind or another. Now, one flag owns my wife and the other flag owns me. But then there's other flags that own other people. <laughs> and when you start jumbling them all together and you make soup out of it, you know what you get? You get shit in San Francisco causing such a threat to the public that they got to write terrible stories about it for the internet so we can be entertained by their disaster. And yeah, and that that's pretty much what it's become. You know, what? What are you going to do? You're going to go, well, Pelosi's got political ties there, so that's probably the Democrat liberal shit. Blah, 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 blah. Now, whether it's really true or not, how many people know? How many videos have I seen about the shit stain in San Francisco that's causing an international disturbance? I haven't, but I've seen a lot of writings. Right, 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 right. Text, 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 text. Now, I'm reading it on the Internet. Read, 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 read. Still doesn't make it true. Now, the weird part is... Life has gone so fucking strange in the last 40 years to this point, it's not unbelievable that it is true. <laughs> it's disappointing as shit, because, you know, I lived in that town when it was not overpopulated to the point of people shitting in the street. And it was weird as hell when I used to drink in the damn Tenderloin. People would even tell me, oh, come on, man, don't go in the Tenderloin alone. That's dangerous down there. You're going to get hurt. Now, I never got hurt drinking in the Tenderloin. Did it for about three years on and off, in and out of San Francisco on little trips and whatnot. Oh, Woody is getting ready so he can score wheat because he wants to be making some cereal. <laughs> hey, Woody went to Arizona. And he's all settled down. He's not a Washingtonian anymore. <laughs> I don't know what he is. But I know he is not living in, in what's that place called Washington anymore. He now is a resident of Arizona. And how that matters to the overall scheme of things, I don't know. I see. I find it hard to believe any any of the crap that we do in life ever only matters to the person doing it. So my advice to you is. Uh, Keep your pants up, your skirt down, and walk home in a group. <laughs> that way, nothing can ever go wrong, and should it go wrong, well, you'll have witnesses to testify in court that you never did anything. You were walking home in a group that day. <laughs> and that's that way that it really works. Because, uh, well, 
I guess, have the courts inter, uh, ha added this technology to the truth part of their crap that they do? I don't know, because if you could get it on the record, it stands as the truth. That's what they tell you. But then you got this magistrate that sits in the middle and depending on his bribes or you know his opinions or his belief system, you might get a different answer than what's right because he don't agree. So that's not a good system to play in. But that's not how they tell you it works. They say, oh, you have these rights and you can go before the judge and you can argue your case and get the right answer and everything will be perfect. Then you find out what you need to do is get a lawyer that works for the judge to defend you from the prosecutor that works for the judge. Uh-oh. There's three of them and one of you, and you're trusting one-third of them to see things your way. Even if you do, there's still two of them to your one. So how can you ever come out of that unscathed? Unless, perhaps, the judge, he woke up in a good mood that day, and the old lady, she said, okay, Charlie, and sent him to work in a good mood. Well, what if you get a judge, and his wife said, no. <laughs> and that judge gets to work, and he looks at you, and you want something from the judge. And the judge says, no. What do you do? What recourse do you have? Oh, we can appeal his decision. Doesn't that just keep you in the loop of un just us <laughs> forever? <laughs> the way I see this must seem like, uh, what do you call it, prejudiced. I'm prejudiced and I'm biased and the court is wrong every time. How could that possibly be? How can anybody hold that opinion? And I would justify that opinion by the strikes they have against them for being wrong so fucking many times. To the point of, they were even making TV shows for uh, Netflix about how badly the court system operates and how easily it was for the police to just lie and make shit up and bullshit and con and scheme and hustle and get you in jail. And then once, you see, once you're in it, getting you out of it is way harder than getting you in it. <laughs> but they lied through this, through movies and, you know, word of mouth is probably the only truth there is. Talk to Vinny sometime. He has a little knowledge. Or Rob Works. Rob Works hasn't been shy about his personal knowledge about how things really are. Yet, we don't want that. I I think the collective wants the bullshit stories, you know, about how Israel and America are working hand in hand to empower the, um, to improve the, hmm, what the hell are Israel and America improving? That they work hand in hand together every day in the struggle to make, something better what the fuck could it be oh yeah nothing <laughs> it's, a, it's a story it's bullshit uh, then what do you do then you sit around on the dark table on Saturdays bitching about boy we're getting fucked in the butt and nobody's even enjoying it I mean if people were well there's one guy that likes it it's, he's a Trump supporter he likes the Trump guy And then by default, if you don't support the Jews, <laughs> then you support the Arabs. Wow. Well, no. Well, what if you don't support neither? What if both sides of that group show themselves to the person looking on, and that person looking on sees two con men scheming together to work you like a monkey? What about that up? Is that possible to anybody does anybody else out there in the real world <laughs> ever just take the time to wonder why these fellas that sit at the same table and break bread on gold plates but they hate each other and it's because of their religion there you go they're sworn enemies and blah blah 
Well, then how come those two pricks are sitting at the same table eating? Hey! Excuse me, folks. My my dog made me go crazy for a minute. She sorry about that. A that was a loud A. Um, <coughs> but it's <clears throat> excuse me. It's one of those times where the explanation is actually way different than the action that you see. So how do you convince people to see the explanation that you tell them? Oh, wow. Well, I've always been a tough nut for that. You know, eh, but everybody else believes the world is round. Prove it. Well, we've got theories. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear any more of your bullshit. Albert Einstein crap. Let's get to the Tesla burger and find out what the hell is really going on here. And this is how I look at it. And I see, well, Tesla, he sent us toward vibration frequency. And then I met Larry Woods, okay? And I learned about Tesla a long time ago, but could never apply it to anything because other people didn't know who the fuck I was talking about. And then this idiot buys a fucking car company, and what does he do? Names it fucking Tesla. What a misleading act that was. Now, see, now they've got people that find Tesla's input into the free energy, blah, 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 blah. But they think, oh, look, they're going to use electric instead of oil. No, they're not. They're going to use less oil, but they're going to still use oil. But what they're going to do, you're going to pay four, five, six, ten times more then a car would have cost you in the when I was working on the car lines in 79. An expensive car was like $6,000 off the showroom, uh, off the assembly line to order. And now 6 size 6,000 would put maybe be a down payment on a decent a decent car, whatever that would be. I wouldn't buy any of this crap. But then again, I have uh, different expectations of the society that I see based on the knowledge that I have. And all I see is a lot of untrusting, lying, greasy thieves climbing all over each other to, to get the better side of the 7% that's left over. And, wow. Mm, knowing it, I guess if you know you're doing it, it's got to be like a relief. It. And if you don't know you're doing it, what could you possibly think you were doing? How can anybody live in this world where forced annihilation is on the table? And you got a hundred mile border around the United States on all the coasts and the border. hundred miles of constitution free zone where the state has all the right and you are obligated to them to prove that you're not an illegal alien. Wow. <laughs> I didn't come from all that, so I'll never get used to it. Uh, my mother, my mother, my father's mother never spoke English to me, and I always resented that. So I'm not above the prejudice of um, the modern day mind. I just think holding on to it and letting it control me is pointless because people are going to behave however they're going to behave and the government is going to report to you what the government wants you to know about these people you're supposed to despise and you will love the jew see they write all oh, the jews anti-semitic don't you dare be anti-semitic because then you'll find out what these fakes are doing calling themselves jews <laughs> and the game would collapse. I wonder what we need to make this game collapse. The weight of it, $21 trillion. Double down. Come on, people. Let's, you know, if you're going to gamble in a life like this with uh, the kind of things they gamble with, nuclear, nuclear, what were they fucking thinking when they came up with, you know what would be a really good idea? Let's split the atom and see what happens. And then how do... How, what the fuck do I know about splitting an atom in the first place? So every bit of knowledge that I get about this nuclear crap is all from the people that created the nuclear crap. 
Now, if you go back far enough, there is a guy, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he made video links about how playing with nuclear radiation was not as dangerous as we were being told it was. There were um, there were handleable amounts of nuclear waste that you could actually touch and da da da. And he made videos, but you don't see my knowledge. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't what he said it was. Maybe that was the fraud. Maybe the fraud is putting the nuclear facilities up. <laughs> Maybe they don't even run. How do you know what in the fuck is going on with all these big, gigantic things that they tell you about? Oh, we go out to space. Okay. Oh, we build nuclear facilities. Okay. Well, how much time do you have to investigate all the details of what I just said in two quick sentences? Nuclear facility and outer space. Those two ideas right there alone. You wouldn't have time to do anything else. Well, what would you be able to prove in the end either? I mean, I saw it with my own four eyes. Come look, come look. Then they come look and whatever you saw is gone and you look like a dummy. Now, that is my reality with discovering or seeing something that other people would question. <laughs> like, like my daily life. In Denmark, <laughs> the, the wacky doodle guy on the radio, he lives in Tralala land and everything is cakey and wonderful. And it's got to sound insane. I guess it would, but uh, no, nah, that, that's what's happening. While the rest of the planet is all arguing about who owns what, I don't give a fuck about nothing or none of it. I have opinions and it's fun to talk about it, but to really, you know, to say that I care, I, how? I've got other things to care about that are in my physical reach, and that's hard enough to to do that, uh, let alone take care of an entire planet in my mind. <laughs> hey, Kate and Moose Girl just showed up together on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Grimner is giving him up. Oh, we lost... We lost Dork Cakes. Uh-oh. He's probably... Uh-oh. We have a dog going insane, too. Anyway, we're at the end of the craziest Dork Table I've done in quite a while. Solo. Ah, 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 ah. Maybe I'll, I'll catch Grammy or, or Vinny next time and tie them to a chair and beat them with a stick of honesty and see what comes out. <laughs> Miss Kate says summer is here. Good for you. I'm telling you, we had a nice, warm, uh, comfortable day here in Denmark, too, on this 6th of April, 2019. Surprised the shit out of me. I could have not worn a coat to the store. It was just a little nip in the air, but enough sun to make the coat warm. So that's a good sign here in Ready Town, where the men are men and the women are women. And the dogs are dogs and the cats are cats. It's very boring and dull here. There's uh, so little excitement. We don't get no, like, uh, what do you call them? Uh, hmm. Suicide bombers. I just completely lost. I knew what I was thinking, but I couldn't find the right name for it. Suicide bomber <laughs> when was the last time anybody physically saw a suicide bomber anyhow i've read about shitload of these damn suicide bombers and they attack these stores and people and da 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 da, da. Mm. but you know what they never seem to attack maybe a bank or a government or sitting politician, or hmm, what else? Well, the military does their shit on hospitals, so hmm, I don't know. Maybe this thing might be more fucked up than I thought. I'm not positive, but I have read some very disturbing reports about what goes on in other countries regarding, <clears throat> you know, the U.S. and the Israeli intervention into their business and their their resources, 
they leave these things out. They don't really want to talk about what's in the Golan Heights that Israel wants so badly that they're willing to go to war to get it. They're attacking somebody, pretending to take back what was originally theirs, but if you read a little bit, you'll realize sooner or later, no, this was never theirs. It was never supposed to be theirs. This is a clever story thought up by a few greedy pricks that, for whatever reason, want this mess to happen. And I've read things like, if my sons didn't want war, there wouldn't be no war. And some prick named Rothschilds wrote that. Apparently, it's a meme. You know, we can't prove it. Where's, where is this Rothschilds family anyway? On the internet. Do you ever meet them? You know, do you ever have lunch with the Rothschilds? I don't. Maybe it's just another clever story to separate us from our hard-earned wages while we're out there working to survive in this world that the Rothschilds own for some reason. They own every fucking thing there is to own. And if they don't, the Queen of England does. If she don't, well, there's a few other people that have stakes in this game at some level of finance, like Trump. But why? You know, what is so wonderful about these wealthy people? What have they done to deserve, you know, because this is the way they talk to us. Oh, you have to work hard for a living and sweat and bleed and, da -da 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 and do all these things within the confines of your collected freedom. <laughs> but us now, nah, we're going to tell the doctors to inoculate you with duck penis goo. Let's see what happens if we inject your baby with a little duck penis and see what happens. Well, we'll throw it into the measles vaccination. And now we're Hannibal. Hannibal, knock it off, you butt nugget. So, you know, now we're so used to being told the weirdest shit. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is because I've seen like <laughs> I've seen links on the internet of groups of people dressed in vagina hats to make a point. <laughs> I don't know what their point was, sadly. I didn't understand the point. I couldn't stop laughing at the fucking hats. But I will say this. Whenever a group wants to be recognized as a group, that means whatever they want, they want something for them but not for you. Hey, Cowboy Tex in and out at here at the end of the show. Nice to see you, Cowboy Tech. Uh, anyway, I've been ranting and raving about the American Jewish bullshit story that we've been living with for years and years and years. Um, what At the end of the show, should I just post the uh, links that I read? Or what would you suggest for notes? Would that be good enough? I'll give the dork table a title and repost on the on the <laughs> email the links that I read. I didn't close them. I thought ahead. Anyway, we're howdying and hanging to everybody on the reallibertymedia.com chat right now. And I'm still going to tell you if you don't uh, if you don't get to the RLM chat to meet a few people. There's a few people we click with each other occasionally. Not everybody doesn't get along. Just only a few people. And then most of that's just crap. And you know, like Vinny and Rob, eh. It's entertainment to the meanies out there in the reallibertymedia.com chat room. You know, looking on to two guys having a little bar fight in a chat room. And af after a while, they, you know, they kiss and they make up and everything's good again until the next fight. <laughs> Oh, Moose Girl says, uh, Jackson heard Hannah barking. <laughs> Sorry, Moose. I tried to mute, but it's difficult. Everybody's in the living room with me today. Sometimes Hannah gets a little excited and other times not. It depends on what's going on in the world outside because, boy, she's, you know, spring come and the dog's, she's still young. She's got a lot of heart. She wants to get involved in shit. You know, smell people's butts and whatnot. 
Okay, that's what I'll do. I will add the links into my show notes and do it like that because I spent most of the show uh, reading stuff and then just pontificating on my vast knowledge of those details. Because, <laughs> you know, it takes a real genius to know that Trump is a buffoon. Nutty Yahoo is a buffoon. Obama, buffoon. I mean, no matter where you take me with these political fuckers, I always think, you know, wow, what a waste of fucking time all this has been. When all they've ever had to do is just sit down and tell the truth. Whatever... <laughs> Moose Girls correcting me on the reallibertymedia.com. No, I said what I said. I meant the what I meant. You, that's what I mean. You see it that way. I just see it as two guys clowning around. One guy gets too serious every now and again. Last time it was me and Vinny fighting. I'm the one that got too serious. You know, but Vinny was getting mean. And you got to, you have to uh, pay attention to the things that have my attention. Not you, me. I must follow my nose. You know, if something's taking me in a certain direction, I find it important to follow where my curiosity is going. And deal with the situation at hand however I feel like dealing with it. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. And with that, we're going to close the dork table. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Nice to see you again, Moose Girl. I, I know you're working during the week and you don't have the... The hours to spend on the times that I choose to do the radio. So, But it's always good to see people come that I know. Like Mental Pancakes and Cowboy Tech and Grimner. Anyway, Grim's the number one hostage. So tomorrow we have Sunday Morning Blues with Grimner into the trivia game. The trivia game is not for beginners. If you're not fast typing going to get your butt kicked in the trivia game. And we play that up until Hal Anthony comes out with Behind the Woodshed, does a little bit of talk on <laughs> how to beat the man at his own game using his own equipment. But it's a tough concept to handle. And Monday, we got Grimner coming on. I believe it's still 7 o'clock on the East Coast on Monday night. With Grim Leftovers, the stuff he doesn't finish on the Freaker's Ball with Moose on Friday night. And occasionally, from shows I've heard, a few things that he didn't plan on reading. Oh yeah, thanks back everybody, whoever's out there, Miss Kate, Moose Girl, Grimner. Uh, and then Tuesday night, I never know with Vinny if I'm doing a In a Perfect World alone or if I'm going to have a partner or not. He's in and out of the electronic world like a hurricane and wednesday and friday you got gram z with the rocket chair podcast at seven o'clock on the east coast and then i squeak in in the middle on thursday night with a two o'clock on the east coast show i called 20 percent off and the topic has been and might continue to be the control games and this week will be if you're following Part four. <laughs> See if I can do a part four to that crazy shit. And then Friday, Grammy comes back 7 o'clock on the East Coast, p.m. with Rocket Chair into 11 o'clock, Grimner and Moose Girl. Because last week I said Moose Girl and Grimner. <laughs> I'm going to change it up every time I do it, if I can remember. Because uh, the, the Freakers Ball, is the that's the big deal on the RLM. So if you like the loud music and the crazy stuff that they talk about, hit the Freakers Ball on 11 o'clock on the East Coast on Friday nights. And then I come back. If I'm still breathing, I'll be back next week on Saturday at uh, 1 o'clock on the East Coast for the Dork Table Podcast for all you hard-ass dorks out there in the electronic world. And today I had a lot of fun reading. I might I might try to switch over to that. That's really getting my it gets my attention. I try to follow it. And I had a lot of fun reading today. Sorry about not being able to read it with a straight face. I think I'm I'm gonna have to try to do something about that because it's got to be irritating to hear somebody laugh about you know such an epic thing as Trump 
you know, <laughs> and Israel holding hands and skipping through the tulips and, you know, kissing walls and wearing Yamahas and, yeah, all that good stuff that people do when they're in love and they want the world to be a better place for all the Jews, <laughs> but not for anybody else. Sorry to put it like that, Jews, but some of us goyims out here can actually fucking read. And yeah, even though I got the nose and the and the clipping crap going on, I don't have the right uh, affiliations, I don't think at this point in history, to make a true tie with these creeps that are in control. They hijacked the Jews and they're holding them hostage. <laughs> I'm just having a giggle. See you gals all later and gals. <laughs> Gals and guys out there in the electronic world, Roger Wilco over and